Right, hello guys, it's BB Couple Gaming here. I thought I'd do a video on, uh, well, training troops to be fair. Because you can only train a certain amount of troops and there's only a certain amount of ways to actually improve this. The main way for me, instead of having loads of like wood farms or lumbers, I, basically what I went for was to have loads of military tents. Every single one of them were over 20. I've got a 25, a 22, two 21s, two 20s. And they basically give me around about 900, 800 to 900 training capacity, which is fairly decent, just under 1,000. On top of that, when I go into my Hero Cancel, I could change out Elena Gala, who is my Master of Strategy, for Lady Isabel. Her Lady Isabel has a training capacity plus 225 trap construction, so that helps out very much to smash out the troops as fast as you can. It also helps to have a piece of equipment that... Um, Increases your training capacity. The problem is I've only got one and I can't be asked to spend to go out and go out there and get more equipment But if you are starting from scratch it is a very good thing to be thinking about doing Mine only does 8% but believe me when I say this that makes a difference because that is still a hundred extra training <coughs> If you're sorry, whereas if you're training a thousand a day no a thousand on each one that's 4,000. If you train 1,250, which I'm close to, then you're doing 5,000. So it makes a difference just doing an extra 100 to 200 more on each on the range, the barracks, or whatever it is. <clears throat> it's very important to be permanently training troops. You don't want to ever be in a situation where you're not training any. Like, I like to wake up, and I still have a lot of hours left for them to be training because, well, at the end of the day, if you're not training, you're not gaining. You need to be gaining power permanently. This is sort of in this game. You need to be churning power permanently. You do not want to be losing it. You want to be constantly stacking it further and further up. <clears throat> you want at least two marches. As my march capacity is just over one hundred fifty thousand, you want at least three hundred thousand then, because if your first march dies, you've got backup. So I'm pretty close to that. I've got two hundred eighty-five thousand. I'm not far off, so I only need to get up fifteen k. But obviously, I'm going to keep going afterwards, just so you know, I have um, a bit of buffer zone. If any troops do die, I still have some. <clears throat> obviously, as you can imagine, that does uh, account for uh, quite a bit of power, which if it counts for fifteen million power, the two hundred eighty thousand troops. Problem is, if I lose them all, so that's a lot of power gone. But you need them to protect yourself and your friends and your allies. If you're talking, if you wanted to talk about which tiers to do, well, personally, I, I just go for the highest tier. So at the minute, I can only do two T eights, so I always do T eights. But the, the the thing is, is that if a player is tactful, they can actually change around which thing they want. So like, if this one is a warrior, so the warrior has an increased defense against archers, as you can read. If I scroll down one, it's Spearman having increased defence against light cavalry. So suddenly you can see that if you, somebody actually looked at your troops, set theirs up perfectly, they would have an advantage. So really what you should be doing is doing a, probably a balance between the two. Well, I, I do get carried away and I tend to just go for the highest tier, especially now because I'm going for my SH-26 upgrade. I'm a third of the way there. You know, once I'm there, I get T9, so the T9s is very much important. <clears throat> you need to be the SH26 to, to even compete, really. I've got decent enough stats to compete, but once I'm 26, I can go out there and fight my own. I've got 70 SH30s in our kingdom at the at the minute, which we are Kingdom 518. All of those SH30s, most, the, I would say the majority of them are dedicated to doing things like KVK and Alliance Conquest. However, you do have a few who like to just go around and attacking people. A few of them can't be stopped, but a few of them do get punished. We do have Kingdom Peace here, and like, I'm not blowing too much smoke up the Chinese. The M it was basically all down to MK and GOD Alliance, because they took it off the Westerners, which, obviously, I was on their side. Took it off the Westerners, and then they enforced Kingdom Peace to carry on pushing for KVK. The problem is here, is that MK is not trying to push the kingdom he, well that that's the banner he puts himself under that he's trying to make the kingdom better but in reality what he is actually trying to do is consolidate power he wants to make sure that all power not 
all strength, all things that come out of this kingdom is bolstering him. He doesn't want it so anybody else has a relic. He says that only him and the G.O.D. can have a relic. This makes it so G.O.D. will be eventually virtually unstoppable, especially with the fact that he, um, M.K. is in charge of at least three, four kingdoms right now. He um, he's holding all of their holding all of their fucking Avalon cities or whatever the hell they're called, and he's taking tax from each one of those. And the tax, if you're wondering how tax actually works on this game, is basically every time you trade with one of your farms or city, every time you send trade, you, you lose, say if you send 120,000, you lose about 20k. That 20k actually goes to the king. So if you actually real think about it, over the whole kingdom, even over a day or a week, he would be loaded. So MK is basically consolidating his power, I've rambled on a bit here, so actually I think I might leave it here, guys. Well, if you if you want to see more, leave a like.